this flight, I am no longer working the Gatling. Now, I knocked it out on the flight from Atlanta to Buenos Aires. First time ever doing it. Um, it was quite the experience, but at the same time, I'm so glad I did it, and I need to do it again. I feel like after I do it maybe three or four times, I really will have the flow that and how everything goes up there, but it was great. Like, I could, I could just work galley on internationals and be that person that was so happy because I run a tight galley and there's so many things to do and get done up there so it was just right up my alley so I get to the back everything is set up for me the person who was our B was knocking the stuff out as far as the carts the setup everything was organized and ready now we had was it three two I think we had three meal options and then we ended up running out of one now once I got on the cart um, I didn't I didn't even know what the meal options were I'm just pulling it up doo -doo -doo, like had no clue um, and so then the guy is like there's beef there's chicken and there's a salad but it was it turns out it was like a beef salad and then a, a chicken dish and a pasta or something I don't even remember what the meal options were but I'm saying okay chicken beef da -da -da -da, kept getting them confused because I did not realize that the salad was was actually a beef salad so I go back up and I was like can you please tell me the meals again well I did not realize on the PA because for flight attendants especially we're so used to the PA flow and we know which one's coming next and we know when they're saying initial and we know if it's just a seatbelt announcement that we don't really listen all the way unlike passengers we really like get the flow of, of the announcements um, but the, but the first officer, the one who went out with us the previous day, had announced on the PA that it was my very first trip ever on the line and that the 4th of July was my birthday. Now, I did not know this. Like, I just was, I don't even know what I was doing to not hear this. So I get to the back, we're, we're done putting all the first meals out, and I was like, you guys, the weirdest thing, like, everyone keeps telling me happy birthday, or they keep asking me, are you Ashley, congratulations, you're doing really good, and in my head, I was like, it's, like, I know I don't fly international that often, and I know I'm super junior and look super junior, but it's it's weird that they keep saying that, so then they explained to me, oh, he, he told him it was your birthday, <laughs> and so it actually worked out to my favor, I feel like a lot of people were more patient and understanding and nice nicer to me, because they thought it was my first day but we pull the next card out we do coffee teas and waters we do drinks we do trash we're do, you guys know international all you do you're pulling carts out you're putting them in you think you're done oh there's another service just kidding more coffee tea and water just kidding we're gonna do a water walk like it was so it's so many services compared to domestic but when you're the floater position the crew kind of gets everything or my crew um kind of got everything ready so it was like once i came to the back and finished with one cart they already had the next cart set up and I would just have to pull it up and it, it was one of those things too it's so reflex once you're in the cart I mean once once your cart is set up it's just such a reflex you don't even really have to think about it once I have a beverage cart in my hand it's not like I have to remember anything I'm just we're doing drinks everything you're knocking it out now you do get asked for things on international flights that maybe you would not get asked on domestic ones like uh, Cafe de Leche that's not something that we really would be asked on a flight from Atlanta to Houston but on a flight from Atlanta to Buenos Aires everybody wants that but you just like it just comes with with um, doing it that you understand oh okay that's the coffee with the milk we already have it made up on the cart boom ready to go now I will say that there are certain things as a junior person working an international flight that I personally um, get a little like worried or like anxious about that does not bother the rest of the crew. Now on our way back I worked the f worked up front from um, like coming in and I found that t to be a lot more not stressful but just more like a a lot more of a challenge than working back just because I didn't really have to like do too much it was just a matter of being on the cart and and getting everything done and the way the the aisles were and I actually have a picture that I will post on Instagram the it is two three two on this particular seven six plane so with us doing the service it's not like a race or anything to see oh who can do the drinks the fastest and get to the back but there were times when the um the lady and the guy on the other aisles we would be done before them so then we would get to the person in the middle and so then a lot of times too on these wide body flights if you're if like if I'm at row 25 and they're at row 21 well everyone that's sitting on the two seat side 
done with them people that are sitting on the three seat side even though technically i would do the person on the aisle in the middle the whole row is asking for a drink now it's nothing like that doesn't bother me you know it's it's another thing too with crews and with um working these international flights it's everyone pulls their weight there's no like oh well i have to do this i can only do this you need to do that you only do that now there are certain things that everyone is supposed to do but it's like once you get on a cart and you're on these bigger flights, especially on long haul ones, people don't really, like they don't know that. So I'm serving the entire row of drinks just because maybe I got to someone faster than the other person. At the end of the day, as after we knock the whole service out, what's done is done. It's about finishing. Like everyone needs to be finished to be done. There is no I in team, you know, we're all, we're all doing it. So all of the services are done at this point. We've knocked everything out. I go back up to the front just to check and see what's going on up there. And I'm talking to one of the girls that's New York based well we're having tea and everything and this guy comes running up to the aisle and he's saying all of this stuff in Spanish and I had no idea what he was saying but I could tell by the way he was saying it, it was very urgent and she looks at me and she says there's a medical something that's going on in the back you need to go check on it I'll stay up here and monitor everything so I go to the back and in my head I'm thinking oh my goodness what is going on please let everything be okay so once I get to the middle I call the back and ask them to turn the lights back on and everything so we can kind of see what's going on and explain to them that I have not actually seen what's happened yet but um, there's some kind of medical emergency going on so once I get to where all the people are at and everyone is standing up they are they're talking so loud and everyone's saying like all this stuff in Spanish and I'm thinking oh my goodness I don't know I don't understand what they're saying and that was another thing that made me really want to learn Spanish not and you can look at someone's body language and hear that there's the way they're saying things and understand to an extent that something is wrong versus right but at the same time you have no idea what they're saying so once I had gotten on the phone with them the other speaker and one of the other girls had came up from the back so we're having to tell everyone to sit down I'm saying it in English and even though I know that there is a language barrier there you can the way you say things can make someone act right I know my dog sometimes they don't understand English but if I talk to them a certain way they know exactly what I'm saying so everyone is starting to sit down so we can actually get to the language now her family is closest to her and she's on the ground at that point and they're crying you know they're they're going back and forth saying different things so then by that time the speaker gets there and he starts translating and saying everything to them so they're calming down their understanding we get what's going on with the passenger so we get her from out of the aisle and we bring her up to the front in one of the little galleys where we can get get like literally get to her and be able to be more attentive to her now at this point you know people especially when things go wrong on the plane everyone gets really concerned and they're really like upset and that can be like a, it can be a little traumatic so we paid for the doctor there was one and he actually was right there by her um and was like talking to the speaker and telling him everything that was going on and then he was a cardiologist as well so he really knew everything that needed to be done so they send me to the back to get emergency equipment and everything and I bring it up to them the captain gets on and we're talking to them making sure you know he's making sure everything's okay and we bring it up to them and everything ended up turning out okay without going into too much detail with the situation and what happened um, it we had we did have to have paramedics greet the flight and everything and take her off first but she is okay um, the family member actually was gonna call and text or text one of the crew members to say thank you and write us up and say you know that was my great-grandmother and you all handled the situation really well we're so sorry and it's always kind of bizarre to me too a few medicals that I've had were people have apologized for it happening and I'm like you cannot sweetheart you cannot predict that no one wants anything to go on wrong on flights we all want boring flights where everyone just drinks water and goes to sleep but those kind of things do happen and as a flight attendant that's our that's where we come in that's one of those things too where some people are like this is what we're really here for is the safety aspect of it and don't get me wrong you're gonna get your diet coke and you're gonna get your hot tea from me but if I need to put an oxygen mask on you as well I got you so we were able to make sure that everything um, did happen how it was supposed to and she was okay uh, and then another thing too is where we were at that point in the flight when all of this went on we really couldn't divert anywhere and get on the ground but with the doctor there telling us that we didn't need to and handling it and making sure that he had everything he needed to make the situation go smoothly we were fine 
Um, and so once I came back out too, there was this lady who had grabbed my hand and she was, she hurt, she had tears in her eyes. It gave, it literally gave me chill bumps. And she was speaking in Spanish, but the speaker did tell me what she said. And she was just like, I just want to thank you so much. You really handled that well. Um, I hope you have a great birthday and you're just, you're doing great and you are really good at your job. And so the speaker told me this because I didn't know what she was saying. And I was just like, oh, she was so sweet. That was really nice of her to do that. Um, but yeah, the, this happened mid-flight and we still had to knock the rest of the services out. And even another thing that I find so like crazy in this situation, all this is going on in the back. Everything, I mean it's chaos, people are crying, screaming, yelling. The people up front didn't have a clue anything even happened until the, the paramedics and we made the announcements saying, oh, by the way, everyone, please stay seated. Don't get up just quite yet. The people in the front are like, what in the world? Like, why? what happened? So that's another thing, too, that with this job, you need to be able to do a lot of damage control, but you need to be able to pull it together. And under high stressful situations, you really don't know how you're going to act. But at the end of the day, you still have to push through it. Now, I have a very calm demeanor and with working at a hospital previously I've seen a lot of things happen that have caused me to not oh, not be numb to things but to be able to keep a cool head in certain situations especially stressful situations so I, I do um, and I'm really like glad that I don't freak out when things happen however I have seen people and been in medicals where other crew members have kind of freaked out so you everyone has to you know like you have to rally together and really be able to like woosah and get things done but yes, it was a very exciting flight on the way back. So once this is all said and done, the crew was like, you have absolutely had a three-day trip that has been so eventful with everything that has happened from the start to the end. There were things that happened all in between I can't even put on this vlog, but it was quite the three-day. <laughs> it was quite the international trip, and I have not done a long-range one like that in a while. I like to do the little Caribbean flights that don't really, um, I don't really count those as official internationals, even though they are technically inter internationals, but with a long-range one like this, it had been a while since I did one, but I still loved it, like regardless of everything that happened in between, especially with the layover and the layover length and being exposed to certain things that happened in this other country, I still liked it. So I, I do think that it's something that I won't necessarily pick up on my off days or be able to in the summertime just because my schedule is so hectic. But when I'm off, um, or, um, or when flying kind of settles back down in September and then for my A days, I think I might try to bid for it. Now, I don't know if I'll necessarily vlog every single one if I do do them, but um, I did like it. And I do, I am glad that I made the decision to do an international, even though it was out of my comfort zone. From the day, from the second I signed in to the second the trip was over, I was just like, whirlwind. Now, the only thing that really upset me, and it wasn't even like it upset me, but I was just like, oh, was that once I went in the country, because I was working this flight, they did not actually allow me to get a passport stamp. So this is one place, and it's a few places I've been to where they won't let you stamp it unless you're just going there on your off days, not actually working the flight because you are a crew member. So that was really the only thing that I was like, oh, bummer, like that's one stamp that I'll be missing in my passport, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, so that pretty much concludes my Buenos ours experience I will be posting the video of like the festival I'm working on editing that now as well as my little experience in crew rest that's gonna be coming up next um, I do once again want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing to this channel for growing with me for getting us to 10k like what in the world there's 10,000 of you now that just blows my mind um, at this point because I've hit 10k I'm actually able to go through a training program and then I will have access to the YouTube offices and I haven't actually had time to look into all of the details of it to see what all in it entails and what all I have to do before I'm allowed to go to the spaces but I'm debating on I think there's an office in LA New York and maybe Toronto I know London has one as well and I, w I would love to visit the London office but for the first time I go I'm thinking New York or LA so we'll see and for those of you that actually look in the description box it will still contain oh 
And once again, for those of you who have joined me for this video and who have made it to the end, I want to say thank you so much for your love and support. All of my social media will be in the description box. Commonly asked questions as well as that if you see this, comment this, will all be down there. I do want to thank you all once again for getting us to 10k and I do have quite a bit of videos planned for July and for August and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!